Hello and welcome to the next step in supercomputing slash parallel programming slash high performance computing. Uh, in the previous videos I showed you all how you could build your own extremely cheap supercomputer out of Raspberry Pis. To do these videos you won't have to have built that same supercomputer so this is just going to be supercomputing with Python uh, an MPI for Pi. It just so happens I'm going to be doing it on my Raspberry Pi two node supercomputer. You can do it on anything. You actually don't even need more than one node. You can kind of do it pseudo with one node, but just reference it multiple times. Um, so yeah, so anybody can go through this. We won't be doing calculations, uh, at least at the beginning, that are so large that uh, there's any necessity to use a supercomputer for them. So if you did follow along with the How to Build a Supercomputer out of Raspberry Pi's tutorial series, you've got an extremely simple example of MPI and supercomputing at work, but chances are you're feeling rather fuzzy since we really just did some setting up, some installing of things, uh, and you're probably longing for a better understanding of what's going on. If you didn't follow the previous series, basically all we did was we just used Raspberry Pi's uh, and use a simple message passing interface uh, script that calculated pi. But we didn't do any of the programming in there, uh, so it's a lot more uh, enjoyable if you do it yourself. So, in order to continue along, we're going to require a programming language to do it ourselves. Most often you're going to see people use like C++ or Fortran being used for supercomputing, and I'm going to mix it up a bit. I I personally enjoy Python, so that's what we're going to be using for it. Python's also very noob friendly. It's what you call an upper level language. Um, so you don't really need to know too much about inner workings. And also, uh, the terminology syntax and all of that is just so simple to use. C is not. And Fortran is really limited to uh, numbers, basically. Um, definitely limited compared to what you can do with Python. So, Python it is. So next up, we're going to need to decide on what MPI implementation that with Python that we want to use. So for that, we're going to use MPI for Pi. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and install and test MPI for Pi in this video. Uh, it's going to be eerily similar to the installation of MPI CH and testing MPI CH. So if you did do that, uh, you will still want to follow along because basically what we're doing now is instead of using MPI CH and Fortran and all that, we're going to be using uh, Python. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. So if you if you have a Raspberry Pi, you've got Python already installed. There might there's some Linux in instances you're not going to have Python pre-installed. I'm assuming everyone here has Python 2.7 pre-installed on the Raspberry Pi. Uh, I'm also going to be opening up everything in PuTTY, but then I'll also probably just use SCP to move files over um, as I edit them because I'm going to edit them instead of using the editor in um, you know, in Nano, let's say, <laughs> instead of using that, I'm going to use the editor on my main computer so we get uh, colored text and all of that. You can do it however you want. If you want to edit it straight into your Pi, uh, that is fine too. So I'm going to open up my uh, PuTTY instances here. Extra PuTTY. And for me, uh, my one well, my my main node is this. Your main node uh, address might be different, but whatever your uh, local address is, if you don't know what your local address is, you'll have to, um, I have config it, but um, I know what mine is. You could also have yours hooked up to a monitor or something, but I'm gonna use PuTTY. Uh, so I'm gonna go in now, I'm gonna log in. All right, I'm in on my master node. Now I'm gonna log in on my, uh, worker and again 192.168.0 and this one was 21 okay so now I'm logged in on both of them and so now what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to uh, install the uh, MPI for Pi on here um, and we need to install it on both of the machines so in every node that's going to run MPI for Pi it obviously has to be installed there so the first thing that we're going to want to grab is we're going to want to do sudo apt get install python mpi for pi run that and I'm going to do the same thing over here apt get install python mpi for pi and so we'll be installing these do you want to do that yes and yes 
And so we'll wait for all this uh, to install. This one's pretty quick. You won't have to wait for uh, how long uh, doing the whole MPI on the other. If anybody came from the other tutorials where we were doing it, it took a really long time. And basically after we're done with this, we're going to want to, we're still kind of following, uh, this will be like the last part where we kind of follow the same structure as that uh, University of Southampton paper went through. Uh, so the next thing that we are going to do though is we're going to CD, um, we're just going to put this in home slash pi and we're just going to make a directory there um, for MPI for pi. That's interesting. This one finished before the uh, other one started first. Anyway, so we are already in that directory, but just to make sure, yes. Uh, so then we're going to do make dir mpi for pi, enter. And now we want to cd into mpi for pi. And now what we want to do is do uh, get http colon slash slash mpi for pi dot google code.com slash file slash mpi 4 pi dash 1.3.tar dot gz and in fact I'm gonna copy this for myself you son of a bitch let's see oh my goodness anyway there we go <laughs> alright so we'll get that I'll do the same thing here uh, Cool. So now we have it. Now the next thing we want to do is tar x f z mpi for pi dash. Uh oh. Oh, I downloaded it. I didn't make the directory. Whoops. Well, I'll just delete that later. We'll do make dir mpi for pi cd mpi for pi. Uh, now we want to do the w get there. Done. And now we want to run tar xfz mpi 4 pi dash 1.3 tar dot gz and then we want to do the same thing here I don't, uh, we didn't do it I don't think no so we want to do tar xfz mpi 4 pi dash 1.3 tar dot gz <clears throat> same thing again uh, this pi is like significantly faster than the other one okay so now back onto the master node uh, ls, there is our MPI 4 dash, or MPI, f you get what I'm trying to say, MPI 4 pi dash 1.3, so let's ls MPI 4 pi dash 1.3, and in here you should see that there's a demo, so we need to cd, um, um, cd MPI 4 pi 1.3 ls, cd into demo, and in here, you should see ls this, where is you? Hello world.py. That's just a very simple script that we're going to run to just make sure it works. Uh, but don't worry, I know, like I said, this feels like the same thing we just did before. We just want to test the installation. Uh, and then from there, we'll actually uh, start writing our own scripts and explaining why this works and all that. So to run this, what we're going to do is we're going to use mpi run.openmpi. And then number, uh, I think it's number of processors. Uh, we're going to say two. And then this is machine file. And now you're going to specify the path to the machine file. Now, if you followed us before, we already made a machine file. And our machine file is located in slash home slash pi slash mpi underscore testing slash machine file. And then we're going to use Python to run hello world.py. Hit enter. And here we have hello world on process 0 of 2 on master 001. Hello world, I am process 1 of 2 on node 002. So uh, if you didn't have, if you never made your machine file, I'm just going to show you what a machine file looks like. It's quite simple. Uh, so that was where ours is located. So hold on here. Let me. back here and I'm going to cd some beach okay I don't know why it's not letting me do that anyway uh, mpi testing slash actually let's just 
and sudo name and machine file. So this is the machine file. Basically, the machine file is just a file uh, with listed out local IP addresses. So you know the ma master node is you know dot twenty, the worker node is dot twenty one, and so on. And that's all the machine file is just a list of uh, IPs. So if you don't, oh man, so if you don't have one, uh, what you're gonna want to do is just make one real quick. You can put put it wherever you want. Uh, it might be useful to put it in the same path just in case down the road you're kind of confused on a path or something. But for the most part, uh, what we're going to be doing now is scripting. So you know what you put in this line will be the same pretty much every time. You're just using the same line to run the script right at the end, right? Uh, this is the script here. So you might as well just copy and paste whatever line you use. So uh, as long as you've got it spitting out that information, then you've got it going right. So if you have any questions or comments, leave them below. In the next video, what we're going to be doing now is learning how to use MPI for Pi. So we're going to start scripting our own Python scripts, uh, basically to do what this one just did here. And so we're going to uh, start like that, and then we'll continue getting into it. So um, if you're new to you know supercomputing and all of that, you know the MPI is just message passing passing interface. That's literally all we want to do here is just pass messages. Uh, so it turns out that it's actually pretty easy to do that with MPI for Pi. Um, and from there you can do a whole lot of really cool stuff. So hopefully that sounds interesting to you guys. As always, thanks for watching. Thanks for all the support and the subscriptions. And until next time.